So, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to this edition of Soccer Hub Talks. My name is Ricardo Balbeira. I'm the CEO and founder of Soccer Hub. As many of you already know, Soccer Hub is an online education platform for soccer coaches, soccer analysts, soccer scouts. So just visit us and get to know a bit better uh, about the kind of offer that we have. Um, so today we are here with uh, Miguel Lopes. Um, we will talk about tactical prioritization. We will introduce a bit the course that we already have available about this subject. So don't forget that this is, is a live event, so you are able to ask some questions. Just introduce the questions on the chat box that I will be gladly selecting some to introduce to our speaker, Miguel Lopes. So um, we will start in a few seconds. Uh, see you in a bit. Hello, Miguel. Can you hear me? Miguel Ops, can you hear me? I cannot see you, Miguel, at the moment. Can you refresh, please, to see if um, things start working properly? Okay, um, just a few seconds, I will try to help Miguel. Miguel, can you hear me? Hello, Miguel. Can you hear me now? Miguel, can you hear me?
Ok, Mr. Miguel Lopes, can you hear me now? Yeah, perfect. Ok, perfect. So, um, guys, sorry for this delay. We're having some technical issues, but now we're able to start. So, Miguel, first of all, let's, um, let's get to know you a little better. Could you please talk a bit about um, your path till the current moment of uh, being a soccer coach from your academic background till the moment that you are now um, coaching at, please, Miguel? Yeah, well, I can say uh, where this, this all started, this uh, football has been always uh, a big part of my, of my life. Uh, I have some heritage too about, uh, about football because my, my father's been a, a professional footballer here in Portugal, then became a coach. So for me to, to be on the field, in training and in dress rooms has always been part of, of my life. So I, in my youth and as a teenager, I, I played football. I played, uh, I did all the, my, my formation as a footballer in, my, in the club, in my, in my hometown, uh, in Chaves. And then uh, at the age of 18, I, I, left, I left my city to, to come to, to Oporto. Where, when I studied at the University of, of Oporto, I studied sports, sports science. Um, I did my speci specialization in, in, in football. Uh, at, th at that time, I also uh, started to my, my career as a coach. I started very early. I started uh, with 21 years old. I, 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 it was my first season as a coach. And at, at that time, I had to, to make this decision. I was playing like in fifth division. So... Um, because it, it was very hard to, to, to do both things. And uh, my, my first year as a coach was very enthusiastic for me, so uh, it, it became easier to, to, to make the decision about quit. I, I quit playing and uh, I started uh, my career as a coach. Uh, in, in a few years, I, I finished my, my, my university uh, career. Career and since then I've been. Um, this is my. Uh, I have almost 20 years as a, as a coach, and in, in these 20 years I started in, in academies of uh, some small clubs here uh, in Portugal. Uh, in five six years I I've been hired by FC Porto, which is a major club here in Portugal. Uh, and I, I stayed in, in FC Porto Academy, uh, where I worked with several um, age groups. I worked with some actual elite players, such as Diogo Dalo, João Félix, uh, Ruben Neves. So a lot of players, I had uh, the luck and the chance and the opportunity to, to work with them um, in their early years as, as players, in under 16, under 14. Uh, so I I stay for eight seasons in FC Porto, and then I had this invitation to go to professional football. Uh, then I left Porto and started to, to work in professional football, which has been um, uh, most of my uh, career since then. I've worked with some other teams here in Portugal, in first division and second division. Then I went to, to Qatar also. Uh, a couple of years ago, I, I, I've been for a season in uh, Qatar Stars League, in the first, first division of Qatar. Uh, and after that, I, I returned to, to Portugal when, uh, and I went to Vitoria Sport Club, which is also uh, an important club here in Portugal. And since then, I, I've been working with the uh, uh, B team, uh, A team also, and under 23 team. Okay, Miguel, perfect. Thank you very much. Um, as you know, guys, uh, Miguel Lopes is the, um, the, the teacher of the course about tactical periodization. Um, during the course, he delivers some, ba some basic instruments and some basic concepts about this uh, mythology. Uh, but Miguel, um, please uh, tell me how the tactical periodization got into your life and explain a bit in a few words what is tactical periodization all about, Miguel. Well, it started when I went to FC, went to Oporto University in my 
uh, university career, I, I had uh, the chance and the luck to, to, to meet Professor Vitor Frat, which is the creator of, of this methodology. And uh, he has been a uh, teacher of mine for, for a year. And that year for me was an absolute uh, real revelation. It's like such a like an epiphany because all all the way that uh, I I used to see things and all the 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 way that for for years and years I got used to to look at, at life at, at world. So he, he confronted us with, with a lot of. Uh, uh, knowledge that was completely new for us, even though some of these uh, knowledges uh, have been um, brought up like 20 or 30 years ago. But the relevance of, for, for, of, of this body of knowledge for, for football was, uh, was real, was concrete. And in the moment we started to, to, to realize a completely new way to, to look at football, at, at training, um, was absolutely enthusiastic at that time. So, uh, and this was at, at the same time that I started my career as a coach. So I had also the, the opportunity because uh, the, the, the knowledge about tactical organization is something that you build when you are in the field. So I had the, 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 the luck and the chance. So from from my areas as a coach to to start to. Uh, try to study it and then try to experiment it and then having this feedback. So what is, what is tactical organization? It, 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 it's, um, briefly, it's, it's a methodology that uh, has an holistic uh, approach uh, about training. It's a methodology that has been conceived uh, in elite football by Professor Vitor Frad because he has been a assistant coach in, in elite uh, team here in Portugal, and but it, it can be uh, completely out of question. Can can be applied in all um, all types of contexts in in football. So it's a methodology in which um, the the game model you, you project that uh, you will pursue for for your team. It's it's the core of the. Of the, the the philosophy and the whole the process in terms of the interconnection between all technical, technical, physical, uh, psychological, mental, or whatever aspects are um, they 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 are at every moment interconnected. So fr from day one, from moment uh, you take your team, all the the, the training process as as purpose as as main goal. To, to make the team evolve in, in, in the sense of what is uh, the game model. Um, and, uh, of course, this, this is uh, much more... The, the, the experience of uh, being in this is much more rich when you have the opportunity to see it. And uh, I also had the, the, the luck in this, in, in this year to, to, to have contact with some other coaches that use this methodology. And um, and you can see how, how it can, uh, in a more much more uh, mm -hmm. consistent and much more coherent process, will make your your team play as a team and explore the the best uh, capacities of of the players. Okay, Miguel. So you, you were saying that you had the opportunity to work with some coaches that already use. Uh, this methodology uh, uh, as a whole or, or part of it. But can you please um, tell us um, how this, did this uh, methodology influenced some of the Portuguese, the top Portuguese coaches? Um, I'm aware that some of them, some of the well-known coaches, uh, the well-known Portuguese coaches use this methodology as a whole or part of it. But can you tell me how did this influence coaching in, Portu in Portugal and how did it, that influence those coaches that use this methodology, Miguel? Yeah, because uh, this all started in the 80s and the 90s. At that time, uh, Professor Vitor Fad was working in FC Porto. He was assistant coach uh, in FC Porto. He worked with several coaches uh, 
such as Tomislav Ivic, some such as uh, Sir Bobby Robson, uh, Fernando Santos, which is now the the Portuguese national team, and uh, his, his his approach was at the time very uh, very uncommon, because uh, traditionally uh, preseason was much more about physical uh, physical training or analytical physical training. Um, so uh, and, and the way the, the, the exercises w were conceived was much more yeah, in a separate uh, way, which uh, which was pay the fitness coach take the, take the team and makes the 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 fitness uh, training and then the coach did had some moments in the week that traditionally uh, used to. To, to make the, the collective harmony and uh, he completely rethink this way and started to, to so from day one, um, try to pursue uh, creating exercises, create a logic in which the, 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 the performance of the players can quickly uh, grow uh, physically, mentally, so and having things at every moment interconnected so the team can uh, quickly get to a to a to a good moment of performance and have a lot of stability during the season with no injuries, uh, with no uh, you know oscillations during the the, the season, and uh, at the time and during these uh, times, uh, a lot of because FC Porto we can say it's a, a little bit the, the birth uh, point of this because uh, then. Uh, for example, at the same time, uh, Vitor Fran and Jose Mourinho were assistant coaches of Sir Bobby Robson. So, for example, Jose Mourinho he worked directly with uh, Professor Vitor Fran. Uh, for example, um, some other coaches like uh, Vitor Pereira, uh, that is uh, right now in Fenerbahce, but worked in some other uh, big clubs uh, in the whole the world. Uh, for example, uh, and the, the, the fact that some reference coach, then uh, Andre Vilas Boas and some other coaches, and the fact that these uh, very well known coaches uh, adopted this uh, methodology, uh, brought up the, all this enthusiasm, enthusiasm, enthusiasm about it, and many, many th people from across, not only in Portugal, of course, in the first place in Portugal, but then uh, from all across the, the globe, the, the interest about tactical position grew more and more and more. So, uh, naturally, uh, because it, it, it also generated some, some, some controversy uh, in some moments because uh, the fact that this methodology uh, creates some... Uh, you know, uh, some uh, rupture uh, with, 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 the, with the past, with what with was the, the conventional way to conceive uh, training all, also generates some, some uh, yeah. controversy, some argument, some discussion. Uh, it, it, some, some people uh, are very, very interested. Some people just don't, are not interested at all. But uh, the... In global scale, the the, re the interest is is growing bigger and bigger and bigger across uh, all the globe. Uh, Miguel, be before we go deeper into the, the course that you produced, I have here a question from Luis Restrepo. Uh, he says uh, he says, "Hi, greetings from Costa Rica. How can I introduce the principles of my model of play? For example, using the interaction zones or the phases of the game." And then he, um, he adds that he's talking about youth development from under 15 to under 21. Can you help Luis with the, this question, Miguel? Uh, in, in five minutes? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's hard because it's, it's a very complex uh, question. Uh, it's a good question. I, I understand the, 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 the interest in it, but uh, it's what, what you if you have the, the opportunity to 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 watch the course and, and, and to get some more information you understand that the first thing that it's absolutely crucial it's it's the way you look uh, at, at the game uh, and it, it, uh, the interpretation that you have of what is 
uh, truly the game model. Uh, and that truly the, the, the game cannot be separate. Uh, like, for example, it cannot be separate uh, of attack and defense. So, uh, and because we, we all have, uh, this is something very recent, this, uh, when the, the, the tactical aspect started to be more and more developed, we have this uh, sometimes this, this need of, of control, of control the exercises. So we, we uh, in this pursuit of control, sometimes what we do is we, we separate too much things. Uh, we separate attack. And uh, for example, just some month ago, uh, for example, uh, Thomas Tuchel that has been recently uh, won the, the prize of uh, manager of, of the year for, for UEFA here in, in Europe, I said that uh, he, he no longer does no longer does this kind of exercises in which uh, he only present uh, offensive situations. So the, the fluidity that is needed for uh, for being in defense and offensive and offensive to defensive. So the, he, he, he doesn't like to, to, to break in the exercises to, to make this fragmentation in which, okay, uh, offensive, offensive, if they, if they uh, lose the ball, immediately stop and restart uh, again. So this, uh, and also your Nagelsmann says about the need of having, uh, for example, moments in the week in which uh, we the, the intervention of the coach is much lower so the fluidity can be represented in the training. So then what you do is to create the circumstances because you know that uh, you will... What, what will be your training is, is playing, but not playing any kind of football, playing your kind of football. But how do you do it? You manage the space and number of players and um, the, some rules of the exercises, but just uh, a few rules. For example, uh, many, many coaches like uh, Vitor Pereira said that the, the importance of having the, the fluidity in training. Sometimes if we... Uh, intervene too much, we are generated an, an artificial context. And if you train in an artificial context, which will be, for example, playing 11 aside against no one or against passive uh, defense, uh, this is not, you cannot train in an artificial environment and then expect to, uh, when they play in, in a real uh, environment, they, they will play. Uh, like you want, so it, it, it has to be natural contexts of training in which you, with s some, some small adjustments, uh, and what, what adjustments do you do? You have to uh, set your priorities, which is something very important in all this process, which means that uh, in, in, the, in the, the past you project uh, from day one and that you will be adjusting uh, across the time then it's important uh, to perceive what in, in, the, in the first moments, uh, if you want to arrive to, to that point, which topics, which tactical topics will be more important. So you start from here. Uh, you start, for example, some coaches that uh, talk more about the, the way they, they, they conceive the game, uh, they... they, they Often they say, for example, some say, okay, I always start with defense because in, in the, the way uh, I in the way I see the game and in the way I can uh, prepare uh, teams for for to perform, it's important to, to have this um, uh, defensive uh, consistency. So they traditionally they they start, but they don't start always in the same way, but they start uh, uh, more uh, about defensive aspects and some others do the opposite and because some others uh, want to defend having the ball. So, uh, but in different teams, they approach it on a different way. So this is not about having uh, this receipt that you can apply on, on, on different contexts. This is about the sensitiveness because uh, the 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 understanding of the game and the way that, for example, a theory of complexity looks at any subject and the way you have to look at the game, uh, this is, it is what will you make you decide uh, where will you start uh, the path. So it's 
this is not a, a method. Uh, we, we have some training methods that you can easily find other other uh, as other contents, but this is a methodology, so it's a logic. And uh, learning this logic, then you, in your specific context, you will create the contexts of training that will lead you uh, to the game principles and to the game model that you believe uh, it's better for your for your team. Uh, okay, Miguel. So, uh, um, as you said, the, the online course that we have available goes deeper into these uh, concepts. Uh, let me just show you guys uh, the course. Um, so we can find here some basic intro about the the content of the course. So you, you talk about, uh, okay, what is the tactical periodization all about? So we, we include also a small interview with Professor Vitor Frad. Then we talk about the complexity. Um, we give some practical examples about FC Porto and the Portuguese under-21 national team. Then we talk the specificity as a meta principle. And then we go deeper into the methodolo methodological principle. So, Miguel, just to finish, what, what will get... What will our students get from this course? What, what are the benefits and what will they learn? Is this some kind of thing that is life-changing for the coaches, Miguel? Well, I, I believe it, it, it can happen uh, to, to any of you. Uh, it's important to you to realize that uh, this, this course will, will be the tip of the iceberg, but eventually uh, it's, it's, it's the tip of, of the iceberg that will... Uh, uh, find the, the, the passion about this way to see things and then go deeper and deeper and deeper than, uh, in the understanding of, of this methodology. So I believe that uh, it will give you uh, some crucial topics, this, this course, so you can at least uh, understand and perceive the, the fact that it, it's obviously it, it's 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 uh, a methodology with, that is uh, very different, very uncommon, uh, different from the traditional uh, view of training. And um, the, the, the essential topics that will rule the, the, the way you organize uh, your, your sessions. So I believe that at least I will show you a little bit of the type, the tip of the iceberg. Uh, I recommend you to the, some some topic because uh, sometimes it, the first uh, moment we we hear and this, the first moment we have contact with it's not easy. But then if you review uh, if you review it uh, with time and time it will make more and more more sense. Uh, I can I can tell you uh, that I had a lot of uh, very uh, early contact with with this methodology and then. I can say that uh, it, it took me uh, really, really, really uh, some time to uh, have uh, uh, a good starting point of, of, of knowledge about it. And I believe that this, uh, this course is, can be a good shortcut to, to make you at least uh, uh, take a little bit of the picture. And then obviously, if you are more and more interested, we'll be... Uh, you will have the opportunity to to be in contact with other uh, other other courses uh, here in Soccer Hub or uh, directly in the technical organization by Vitor Frat. Yeah, um, just to finish, as you know, guys, uh, this course was produced in partnership with Tactical Periodization, a uh, registered brand. Um, they also produce uh, a kind of a master about this subject. This course is uh, an introduction to this mythology. So um, as Miguel was saying, it's not an easy set of concepts. So you can watch the course and rewatch the course and then maybe go much deeper uh, uh, into tactical periodization, one of the masters that tactical periodization offers. So um, I invite you all to take a look at the course. I, I just posted the link on the chat box. Um, Miguel, I would like you to thank you very much first for um, being with us and producing this online course and then your usual availability um, to be here with us. I know that you are a busy man, you know, always working with, uh, with this case, in this case with Vitoria. Uh, it's hard work. I, I know that. But thank you for your time, Miguel. And I hope that I'll be able to 
meet you again soon, okay? Guys, thank you very much. Thank you for thank attending you our you webinar. Time. Miguel, thank you very much also. And see you soon. Okay. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you for bye -bye. you all. Thank you. Bye.